Meanwhile, we have Alec Dawson speaking next. Will you, will you come up? He's from Tower Green, which I believe will mean something to all of you. <laughs> I was told not to mention that for some reason. Uh, and he's a very big hockey fan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, uh, uh, I want to thank you all for uh, this speech. It's mine is much worse than anything else you've heard so far, so if you need to go to the bathroom, it's a really good time to do that. Um, and as much as it seems appropriate to praise Fiona in a talk about her, it seems much more appropriate to ridicule John. And, talk about her. and um, I was thinking about how to do this appropriately, and I thought, well, there's this thing about John and Fiona. As, as some of you may know, I hope the kids know, and if they didn't know, they'll know now. John and Fiona met over the internet. And John is John is uh, John is something of a of an of a internet whiz kid. So I went to the internet. I thought, I thought, where can I sort of come to some sort of synergistic relationship to Johnness, but through the internet? And I found a website that will be familiar to some of you. Um, in a sort of painful way, like a sort of gallbladder surgery. Um, it's called RateMyProfessors.com. <laughs> now, some of you will have posted angry things on RateMyProfessors.com, and some of you will have been the victim of angry things posted on RateMyProfessors.com. John is the latter. Um, <laughs> but I have composed, I have composed a poem. Not really, I haven't composed it. I've assembled a poem to start my. I, I, this, is, this is mostly going to be an effort to tell people things about John that they don't know, and that will ruin his life as a result. But, but I started off with this poem, uh, again, these are not my words, these are the actual words of, uh, of balance. <laughs> Most of these come from people who gave, gave him smiley faces, and, and I just want, I, didn't, I thought it was just too cruel to have that unhappy face before. No chili peppers, by the way. <laughs> the title of my poem is John is Different from Other Spam Props. That's John, J-O-H-N. I will indicate all of his spelling mistakes. <laughs> he is younger. And less dry. Disorganized. But fly. And he really seems to try. <laughs> to be a pirate sort of dude. <laughs> John is different sort of span prop. Sure, he's a bit of a condescending top. <laughs> and sometimes he smells a little off. <laughs> he's even somewhat rude. You will not get graded assignments back for a long time. <laughs> now, graded in this sense, I need to take Graded is spelled G-R-A-D-D-E-D. -D -E -D. <laughs> so, back for a long time. And it does not help to complain, much less whine. And his syllabus, well, you can make neither reason nor rhyme. <laughs> and enough with the multitude. <laughs> but still, he is different from the other span pros. And though he is no Vincent Van Gogh, <laughs> At least he's not a fascist. Um, um, I, I want to share. I, I do. I do want to share some honest things. I, I, the, the first time I, I felt like I really understood John was when I discovered that, that among the records that John holds, he holds the record for the highest library fine in the history of. <laughs> it is my understanding, and I am not kidding here, that it is somewhere, it, it, at a certain point, it got to be in excess of $5,000. Oh, what would it tell us? 20 something. 20 something. No, no, this is not, this is not untrue. I, I, I do not know how he got a library fine in excess of $20,000. But he went, he, he got Dominic strauss con and he went and he negotiated. And the thing is that they negotiated with him down to, what, $1,000? So he really got he really got a discount on that, on that loan. But he had to promise austerity measures as a result. And he, he failed to deliver on those austerity measures, which in, in, it has now resulted in an almost Greek-like tragedy. I don't mean Greek in the sort of edible sense. I mean Greek in their current fiscal crisis. And John is now... 
now, John, John is now legally prohibited, not even from taking books out of the library, from actually entering the library. And, and so he gets all these books from Amazon.com. And the only way he can do that is by getting new credit cards every month. Um, Fiona, I would suggest that you handle the finances in this marriage. But John, John has told me some stories about you. And I'm really thinking Sophie should handle the finances. <laughs> By the way, by the way, he is hoping, he is hoping that Angela, Angela Merkel is going to step in and sort of solve this whole problem. And in, in anticipation of this, and I think actually a kind of, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this, his next book is going to be titled Why the German Socialists Are Right and Everybody Else is Wrong. I don't think that that's going to work. Other things about John. I just, I just a few brief things I want to say about John. John wears a leather jacket and Doc Martens to go sailing. Um, he, think ping, he thinks ping pong is exercise, particularly because the isometric quality one gets from trying to hold a beer in one hand. Um, he wrote 13,000 Wikipedia entries one summer, and yet spent the entire summer rewriting a single sentence in his book manuscript. He avoided, you can hold the poster Germany again, his book, that book poster Germany, that was more than three years late to the press. And in fact, it was so late that, that he was careful, and every time he would go to a conference, he would walk around with a sort of a quarter of people around him looking out for the editor of the University of Minnesota so he could duck out of back room. And so, and so he gets it in like almost four years late, right? He sends it, and that day he sends an email to the editor, right? And so I send it in. He doesn't get an immediate response, and he was pissed. <laughs> He was completely, I thought that was just, I thought that was astounding. During this period, during this period, he got to be ranked to, uh, in the, he, I, I don't remember the exact number, but he got ranked to be within the top 100 of a video game that involved eating other people. <laughs> well, no, you can describe it. He literally spent an entire summer sleeping not at all, playing his online video game, uh, trying to get trying to get within the top 100. What was the name that came from? I'm too embarrassed. <laughs> there's a few other things. There's a few other things I want to finish. Um, John, for all his for all his terrible qualities, um, <laughs> has some other qualities that that are also completely inexplicable. Um, he has, this, he has this deep insistence, this deep desire that in spite of his general unpleasantness that people actually be pleasant to one another. He's very, he's very oddly popular with children. Um, I think it's because he keeps candies in his pocket. Um, and he, he almost never fails to bring high quality drink to a party. He's always occasionally two or three hours late to set a party. Um, and he single-handedly manages to keep the thank you card industry in business. <laughs> um, but he's also, I, I want to finish, I, I want to finish on something that is a slightly more serious note. We have all, we have all uh, long been aware that, uh, we here in Vancouver, those of us who sort of share a company with John, have long been aware of it, that, that there may at some point in the future or in the present or in the past have been things that have Call John away from Vancouver, job opportunities, and, you know, post post hegemonic opportunities, and we've all sort of we've all sort of loathed that opportunity because we've all thought it would be a, a terrible thing if he if he were to leave. And of course, we were then we were all then quite happy to see the global economy collapse and higher you know, education be dismantled in the United Kingdom and the United States. All thinking that that once you know once the global economy was I'd take rock bottom, there simply would be no opportunities for him anywhere else. And he would be stranded here in Vancouver with the rest of us. Um, but we were, all, we were all, in another way, much, much happier um, that other things in the past year and a half have called John to stay here in Vancouver, particularly Fiona and her lovely family and this lovely child that they brought into the world, uh, David and Irene. So we are, we're not only happy, we're happy for the, the or those the we, the royal we, I am happy that John has, has, has come into your life, that you have come into John's life, and of all the things that you, that you have brought him. But, but most of all, I'm deeply happy that you have now trapped him here in my <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so that we will continue to enjoy your presence for the years to come. So, congratulations.